Today on The Grid, it's Blind Photo Critiques Day. Yay! My co-host is a can of ham. That's it. It's a can of ham. <laughs> We've got some lovely giveaways today, including my awesome book, and it all starts in just 30 seconds. The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should, too. Go to platypod.com. hey <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to another live episode of The Grid. My name is Scott Kelby, but that's not important because my co-host is a can of ham. Oh, yes. He's the king of Siam. He's from Kurvlekistan. Sam I am. It's Sam I am. <laughs> it's Mr. The Kuna Rocket Man. How you doing, Mr. K? Hey, good. How are you, Sat? I'm I am well. Now, Mr. Mr. Kuna, this week was busy while the rest of us are toiling in what is it? An anonymity? Toiling in anonymity. And if you've ever been in anonymity, it's very sticky. Anyway, he's out there creating some cool shot at the Sunshine Skyway. Can you show it? Can you share us your shot? Yeah, yeah. And it, yeah, was, so it was we shared went, by the it, local it news station. A little, uh, that was it. That's a little bit of that uh, photo that. action. And there's the Sunshine Skyway. So And a big old moon. Yeah, and that's a little earlier. So actually, you can see the cloud layer. If you look like right at the top of the frame here, you got that cloud layer that was blocking it. So I only got it till about this point. But the shot was actually this framing. But the moon was supposed to be sitting right there. In between, but it wasn't ever going to get there uh, with the clouds. Well, actually, right there. Stupid but clouds. That happens. It so, does happen. But we did. We actually. Oh, we shot the Milky Way too, up in Life North Florida. Fine. So away. Yeah, there's the Milky Way rising over Florida. Hey, that's do you like actually to Florida right there. So this is Tampa down here, and Orlando. That's all light pollution, and then you got light pollution from like Ocala and uh, Gainesville over there. So yeah, a lot of light pollution from. Uh, Ocala because of all the horses. Yes. But yeah, and that's a deep space. Hey, can, we, can you look up on the top left corner though? You see how the Eric Kuhn is written in like NASA letters, like yep, the NASA yep. alphabet? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah, anyway, we're glad to <laughs> customize your nameplate with the font. Thank you, you for uh, for sharing that, Mr. K. Yeah. Uh, anyway, today's grind. <laughs> grind. It's blind. It's not grind. Blind Photo Critique Day on the grid. We've asked our viewers to send in their photos for a blind critique so we don't mention their name, so we can be honest with them and tell them their stuff stinks. And uh, that's what we're going to do. Every photo that you're going to see today stinks, and we're going to make fun of the people that sent them in. No, it's not like that. Uh, I've seen a few of them. We've got some really good photos. We've got some photos that need some work, awesome. but we got some good photographers sending stuff. We had a lot, a lot of entries. So uh, we're going to launch into it. While I'm getting this ready, which will just take you know a few seconds, Mr. Kuna is going to uh, tell you what we're giving away today because we always give away a ton of stuff on the Yeah, we grid. got a ton of stuff again. So uh, for prizes this week, uh, we have the uh, Platypod Max. Uh, we're going to be giving away the Platypod Max. Um, great tripod alternative where you can stick uh, Well, if you watch the show, you know. But anyways, Platypod Max, we're going to give that away. Uh, we've got Scott's new iPhone uh, book uh, is com coming out. Well, actually, it is out, um, and you can get it uh, over on the Kindle version. Yeah, it's going to be in print next week. And print next week, so there you go. Go get it on Amazon, but somebody can win that today. And then uh, we're giving away a copy of the Boris FX Optics plugin, which is really a uh, neat uh, Photoshop and Lightroom plugin um, as well. And then the Slick Pick Portfolio Level Account. We're going to be giving that away. So that's SlickPick portfolio level. And everybody can get a 25% discount on SlickPick uh, if they're interested going over to slickpick.com forward slash Kelby1. And then they can get 25% off their SlickPick account. And it looks like Scott needs to connect his machine. I did. I'm getting a note. I'm connected. They got it? Maybe. Maybe. We don't see it. So. All right, we got it. All right, we got it. All right, we're gonna launch in. Here we go. Starting off. Oh, before before we launch in, and that's a good image right there. But <laughs> before we launch in, uh, to enter the contest, you just leave us a comment. Tell us what you want to win. Uh, tell us where you're from. If you have any questions, feedback, comment on the critiques, just leave us a comment, and that's how you win. Hey, if you're gonna break up the show like that, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a plug in for my book here. 
the the iPhone book here. Oh, yeah. So the, this book I just found out from the publisher has got my highest pre-orders of any book I've done in about four years. Yeah. So it's 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 going to be hot, folks. It's smoking. Oh, yeah. Amazon's showing it in stock on March 9th. So yeah, very go order one. It's inexpensive. And uh, and the whole premise behind the book, for those of you who have not seen it, the premise behind the book is I'm teaching photography techniques that you would teach to DSLR and mirrorless you know, users, like you know, serious photographers. But I'm just assuming that your phone is an iPhone. And so about 25% of the book is cool stuff you can do with the iPhone. The other 75% is um, literally just stuff just you know just photography stuff. master photography now, if you're yeah. watching this this you're probably not an iphone photographer you're probably a dslr or a mirrorless photographer so this may not be the book for you but i'll bet you know somebody that would love to have this yeah. book like you know that person that's got a good eye and they're shooting on their iphone and they want to take better pictures but they're not going to go buy dslr or mirrorless get them this book i promise you they will love it it's got straight five star reviews so far so go go check it out they can you get in the ebook the kindle book is available immediately uh and the print version will be out in march 9th so okay all right let's look at some that, shots because we already, we already know what one of them looks like yeah I know exactly where that is. I stayed at the bed and breakfast there. All right. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, right yeah. There. Yeah. That's a main. Thor's well. Yeah. These are all really good. Yeah. You know what else? It all looks like the same photographer took them. Yeah. It's the Very same kind post. of tone, same, same kind of post. Yeah. I love it. Tone. It's all good. That's a very good picture of Thor as well. They had yeah. to get very wet to get that. Oh, yeah. This there's there's no stuff. like visitor stand there where you can they're they're in the water I mean, everything to uh composition wise oh yeah it's very solid uh the horizon is not falling over on any of the pictures um no these are great these are great this one is particularly oh, good this is a great uh the leading lines again always with the milky way you lead them yeah. right in that valley and oh yeah leading Dude, these are... back with the the reflection there i mean it's just everything i wish i knew where that. that spot was these are taken in oregon on the oregon coastline and like i said my wife and i stayed in that bed and breakfast where that uh that lighthouse is and uh th these are just wonderful these are really nice shots and a great way to start off our critiques yeah. so yeah. yay all Absolutely. right well there you go so that's our first one and yeah, just keep on doing what you're doing yeah you just you just keep doing you just don't change anything all right here's some other nice very nice images i think Again, same photographer, same series, good looking stuff, uh, very nicely done all the way around. Good clouds, uh, good uh, composition, and nice time of day, that late in the day, you're getting that nice soft light and the nice soft shadows. Uh, horizon lines are in good places. And uh, you got leading lines. It's just very nice. Yeah, they've done all... a lot of with patterns and leading lines. The one in the middle is probably the one that uh it's just like i don't know it's Something the least of the three yeah yeah that's that's, that's yeah, it yeah. but still good i mean still good yeah picture these on canvas in like a cottage or something they would oh, look yeah. really nice like especially in that area if you lived in that area yep. yeah yeah very nice these are these yeah. are very nicely done good job really don't have much to well, say there we go we're gonna this is gonna but, be quick all it's right up. we're rolling let's see the like, next one here hold on Is there a dog peeing in the background? Uh, it, it's either a dog peeing or a statue of a dog peeing, but it's definitely a dog peeing. So I like, I kind of like this first one. Yeah. I just like architectural, neat architectural That's lines. That's the definite best of the yeah. bunch. Yeah, I, I think you got something going here. Yeah. That. I'm not sure what I'm looking at here. Like, I'm not sure. Am I supposed to see the dog? My eyes well, are drawn to the and, dog. And that's what, because it's so blurry, but yet it's something that our mind is filling in the shape. Uh, like, when something is blurry in the background, but it's still, it's like it's not sharp enough to where you can tell where it is. or It's your mind plays with you. And it's bright. It's brighter than yeah, the foreground. Like, so when I opened this up, that was the first thing my eyes were drawn to. Yeah, the dog and the door, because so, it's bright. I, I'm not, I'm a little... And, and this last one, 
That is this a is, straight up snapshot. This is a snapshot. This That's is this a straight doesn't up, like, So you you were going in the right direction here. Less of this. Like this is this is straight up a snapshot. Yeah, like, there's, there's, I mean, that's just, I yeah. took my camera out and pointed it down. Yeah, the, but I like where you're going with this a lot. I'm a little confused here. Don't go here. Yes, no. Yes, no. Well, and the, the that middle one with the dog thing, I mean, I, I, I know. we don't know where to, we don't know what, what's the subject. I'm thinking it's You have competing subjects with here. With the flowers coming yeah, out, but yeah. if it is, like get really tight on those. And like simplify your background, uh, and maybe do more wait of this. for a time of day where you don't have those highlights in the background, yeah. or to tone them down in post. But yeah. yeah. All righty, we got a little bit of work to do yeah, there, but got some but work to do there. Not not terrible, not bad. You're 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 heading. Ooh, now look at these. Wait, I got I got to actually open these up in camera raw so they're they're bigger. Oh, I just I'm going to tell you right now, I love these. Ready? Take a look at these. Yep. Love them. Love them, love them. These are so graphically pleasing. I don't even know what that is. Oh, it's a pair of sunglasses and another person. I'm telling you what, this person's got a great graphic eye. Yes. This is, and, the, and so the, the, the theme here is graphic. It's, it's a graphic look. So it's not so much about the subject. It's about yeah. the lines and the color. And It's and, kind of like even on the first one. You know what it is, is... It's that whole thing of like you said, well, what is it? But it still was pleasing before you knew what mm -hmm. it was. And that's where you're talking about it's graphical in nature. It, it, it's right. more about the shapes and yes. the colors yes. with all these photos. Yes, yes, and yes. And that's okay. I mean, that's that that's cool. I, I don't mean, know who took these, I mean, I mean, but I'm I, telling I could, you. You could tell right away that's a kite. But yep. still, it's really cool yeah. with the way it leads. And they've got it perfectly yes. positioned up to the corner there. Yes. This is yeah. all good. Who I, somebody do a whole bunch of more. Because this is the kind of thing that you get in a gallery. Yes. Like where you get a gallery show and you've got a series of images that are all hanging yeah, together. I'm telling you. a fine art feel. You know. Very fine art. I yeah. love it. Love it. I'm just super, Yeah, if you did a series of those, it would become like if you had 20 of those, it would be a gallery. Oh, yeah. I'm super loving it. Let's see what we got here. Oh, hold on. Let me make them bigger. Let me make them bigger. I'm super loving these already. This is a good day. It's a good day. Ooh. Mm. Ah. Definitely my least of the three, though, that one. Yeah, that was my least of the three. I really like the subtle lighting. I like it, too. But I feel like the shadowing... Is it, is it just me or like the No, you know what it is? No, here's what it is. There's a little glow. Do you notice there's yeah. like, a, look at this one. There's yeah. like a little glow around like everything. Yeah, it's just, it's throwing me off. It's All like right. it's the, a little The glow cooked. is throwing me, but I'm telling you, there's, I love where they're going with this. Yeah, yeah. They're, they got some good stuff. This, like is, really, this is the best. Yeah, well, That's that one's really the best good. because again, it's not, I think because it didn't push it to that limit of the other two, right? But that... This first one and the last one, but especially that one, I really love it. But there's something that looks unnatural it, about it. It looks um, composited. Yes, it looks composited. Well, part I mean, of if it, it wasn't composited, here's why. there's something. The color is different back here. You have a bluish yeah. color in the background, and this is yellow. Let me go in with a brush. May I, Eric? Yeah, yeah. Go in with a brush, think this is, and I'm going to throw a little like blue. Painting or something on this. I'm going to throw a little blue on Definitely. here. More blue. Hold on. I'm painting in blue. I'm gonna throw some. That's nah, too much blue, but hang on. Let me let me get. It's not blue, yeah, really. We're going it's, over it's, the top right now. Yeah, I'm going way over the top. But I'm, I'm gonna adjust the color. I'm just painting it, it in. Just give me give me a sec here to. All right, because it, it is actually uh, more greenish, not so blue. All right, now let me get the spill out. Whoops, hold on, hitting the wrong button there. Let me get the spill out. Now, do you see how the color is yeah, matching yeah. more the background and yeah. stuff? That's what's wrong with this one is it does the colors don't match the background so it looks like a composite you got to do some work i did that it was very sloppy and quick yeah but there's something i don't know there's just something yeah the other off. one's got a glow this one's got a glow too so yeah. but this this one looks like a composite and it, it may not be especially this in the is really stand. good if you went down in that kickstand there's this something is, about that kickstand that's throwing me off something because it's it's got a highlight on it but then it just goes to complete shadow down there below. Well, it's not a shadow. It's brown. If you look on the yeah. monitor that I'm seeing over here. Yeah, maybe it's my monitor over here that I'm looking at. It does look composited, though. 
I don't think that it is, but it does. And there is a glow behind it. Okay, but all that aside, we're just yeah. nitpicking the stuff. You're really going in a great direction here, so keep it up. I th I, I like where you're going. Well, the you know, subtle so lighting. They're they're, uh, they're sculpting light. You know, yeah. they're definitely the three pictures are about sculpting light. Yeah, but look at that glow. There's a glow around yeah, the, that a one, dark glow around yeah, the whole it's thing. Like cooked. Yeah. Cooked a little bit. Yeah, but but still, I'm still I still like it. I still think they're they're doing a good job. Yeah, you're right. The tone on the first one is what's throwing it off. It's like the the, yeah, the light see, let's on do the one, one more. doesn't match the other. Let's do one more. See what we got here. Here we go. These are nice. Nice. The, the first one's just playing. I mean, you want to tilt your head. You do. It looks a little tilty. Yeah. But but I I feel but like that, it's on the hill, so I'm okay yeah. with it. <laughs> I'm looking at Eric in the studio. He's tilting his head. <laughs> like, is it? It's uh, yeah. This one's very nice. I like that one. This one's got a nice reflection. It's got, I like what they did with yeah. the sun. The sun, so they're at like F22, and the sun's touching something, so you get those nice beams of light. And it's oh, just you know a they very... Oh, the, um, the leading line of the, the, the uh, ramp, the deck, the dock. The dock. How the dock leads towards the sun there like curves back towards the sun yeah. no if that's you... that's a straight up good picture yeah it's straight up good this one is you did everything right it's just the sky's kind of meh well they did a good job because the sky was meh yeah if they got more of the sky it would have been even worse yeah they they limited the meh sky yeah and they got down low so they got a foreground so here's what i would tell you about this photographer they understand composition mm -hmm. and they're they're building uh photos that have depth like this has a foreground and yep, a middle layers. ground and a background layers. definitely has layers. building in layers and and this one too so while i'm not as crazy about this last one just because it's 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 just a little flat and kind of meh but compositing, I mean, not compositing, compositionally wise, you did a nice job with it. You're obviously a, a talented yeah, photographer. Yeah, I and mean, it might just be the way you're positioned. Like even that last one, if you go to the, the waterfall, like if you were over, yeah. I'm just looking over to the right. But you may not be able to get but over there. But you might the not right. be able to there get over there. But if there, you could right. get over there, yeah. that might make, create it right. a little stronger. But uh, I like where you're going. This is the strongest of the three. Oh, yeah. I actually really like this one. I kind of like the cool tone to it. And this is my third favorite, but they're all, I mean, they're all yeah. good shots. So, all right. Hey, coming up next, uh, where we got more, a lot, a lot more images. Uh, I do want to mention, we've got a wildlife photography conference coming up in just a few weeks. It's coming up March 16th and 17th. Is that right? Yeah. Two weeks from yesterday. Two weeks from yesterday. Hundreds of photographers all over the world have already signed up. So come and join us. It's a two day conference. And here's the big thing. You can watch it live as it happens or. You can watch it on replay for up to a year streamed on demand. So there's 21 classes in all. So it is ridiculously affordable and you get an archive of it for the whole year. You can go back and watch anything that you want to watch. I'm teaching a couple of classes on, uh, yeah. on, on one on printing, uh, be able to print your wildlife images and one on organizing your wildlife images. So yeah. And anyway, I mean, like you come. said, it, it was, you know, tons of people sign up, but people have been loving that. Uh, these conferences and and especially if you want to dig into wildlife photography oh, yeah. this is the time to kind of immerse yourself this in is it. wildlife photography. and wildlife is something you can do right you don't have to be around a yep. whole bunch of people or whatever so um we're gonna go ahead and show you the 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 official trailer for the so watch it and while, while you're thinking of it i want you to think of wilford brimley and a bowl of quaker oats we'll be right back Ask any wildlife photographer, and they'll tell you there's a pretty unique thrill that happens when you capture a beautiful wildlife image. You're right there in that split second where your subject, your camera, and your creative vision all come together to create something special. Great wildlife images help us connect to nature, and a great one can tug at your heartstrings bring a tear to your eye, or help foster a personal connection with the species. A great wildlife photo stays with you, whether it's that image of a soaring bird in flight, or a tiger stalking its prey. 
being able to capture that moment, that natural behavior, their curiosity, or their strength. It's a rare chance to study these amazing animals up close and personal. It's what's drawn so many photographers to this wonderful genre. Creating these truly unique images isn't just luck and a long lens. It's technique. It's planning. Knowing the right locations, the right settings, the post-processing secrets, and having it all come together at the precise moment. It's part art, part craft, and a whole lot of fun. This March, a team of some of the world's most gifted wildlife photographers is coming together with one goal in mind, to help you capture the greatest wildlife images of your life. They're here to help you understand the whole process from start to finish, and how to capture the type of wildlife images you've always dreamed of. Images that make folks look at your images and just say, wow. You'll learn how to photograph their range of emotions and pro tips for capturing a rare glimpse into their world. The timing, the composition, the gear, the settings. You're gonna learn it all from the best in the business. It's two full days online, and it's open to everyone who longs to create truly exceptional images of nature, its unique inhabitants, and their surroundings. This is the Wildlife Photography Conference, coming March 16th through 17th, 2021, with a special pre-conference session the day before on what makes a great wildlife photo. The breathtaking beauty and diversity of the natural world await. Come and join us on this remarkable journey. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey, we are back. Uh, if, if you get a chance, go to YouTube and type in Quaker Oats <laughs> Wilford Brimley. His Quaker Oats ad is so great. And I love where he's like, it's five pennies and a dime. <laughs> You know, and, he's, and he kind of chews you out like your grandpa would. You know, it's yeah. kind of like, well, it was you're like, stupid it was like, if you're not eating this but stuff, it wasn't, son. It wasn't straight, you're stupid. It was kind of like that whole thing of it was just a little bit of a dig of if you're not doing this, you're yeah. stupid. Yeah, he's like, yeah. It's like, it's like your grandpa would sit you down and go, son, breakfast is about, about a hot meal. It's five pennies and a dime, and if you can't afford that, you need to find a different line of work, son. But it was done in, in a loving but firm way. Oh, he was boy. great. But seriously, go type in Quaker Oats Wilford Brimley. And uh, the one you want is actually not the first one where he's wearing a uh, a blue. It's the second one where he's wearing a pullover sweater. I just never it's thought we'd be talking right about here. a 1992 Wil or the Wilford Brimley commercial from the... I don't think you can hear my audio or I'd play no. it right now. No, Let me, I, they, just did, I didn't think we were ever going to talk about Wolf of Brimley's open. Oh, I'm telling commercial. you, this is so good. It's, it's it's like a 30 second commercial, but it's so good for Quaker Oats. Now, I, I don't know. Can, let me see if you can hear my audio. It's so good. <laughs> it's so he was a classic. Uh, so, hey, is Mike in the studio? Who's in the who's directing? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear my audio? Does it come through my? I don't know. Well, I can just put my mic down here for that matter. Here we go. You got to hear this. You just got it. It's Everybody, you got to hear on, this. Wilford Brimley. I'm here going full screen with Wilford. We're going to do it. Here we go. You know, when I was a kid and got a hold of a nickel, I thought I was rich. I didn't turn <laughs> up my nose at pennies either. Today, some folks won't even bend to pick them up. Well, here's a bowl of steaming Quaker oatmeal. And I can't think of a healthier way to start the day. Cost you one nickel and four pennies. So if you can't be bothered with nickels and pennies, throw them in a jar. Start an oatmeal fund, Quaker Oats. It's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. 
<laughs> Come on, that's a great commercial. Oh. Anyway, that's what I want you to think of when I, when you think of the wildlife conference. All right, that's what I want you to think of. Yep. I want you to think of Wilford Brimley eating oatmeal. And you know what? You know how much it costs to attend the conference? It's four pennies and a hundred and thirty nine dollars and ninety six cents. <laughs> Something like that. I forget what it is. It's not that much. Okay, but it's four. Starts with four pennies. All right, we got some right. comments, and then we're going to get some yeah, more images. I'll get the images all ready. Over the place. You get the uh, comments. We even have uh, John Dukes saying he's looking forward to the Wildlife Conference. The last landscape and travel conference were some of the best I've ever attended. So, all right. There you go. And then Matt Wolf saying that conference, of uh, the, the Wildlife Conference is the week before he leaves for the Smoky Mountains to photograph some wildlife. Very so there nice. you go. Perfect timing. Uh, we got Rick saying hello to Christina, Eric, and Scott. Emmy saying hello from California. Bruce saying hello from Marietta, Ohio. Lou from Munns Park, Arizona, uh, would love to win the Lytra Light. So there we go. We got, we got, we got, oh, we're not giving away a Lytra Light. So there you go. Um, sorry, but Brigitte. I do love the Lytra Light. I've used the Lytra Light. You've used the Lytra Light. Love the Lytra Light. Yeah, that's uh, terrific. Brigitte saying uh, hello all the way over. Looking forward to uh, critiques. Uh, Mehdi uh, from Denmark is saying hi. Kador from Transylvania. Wow, there yeah. we go. Uh, Stanley Turk from Bowie, uh, Maryland, and then uh, Ken G from Saskatoon. 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 Uh, and then we've got um, Glenn from Calgary, Nina from Pennsylvania, Lewis uh, from Maryland, Becky from Goodyear, Cat Bo from, yes, over there in Kuna, Idaho. Idaho. Oh, it's actually Kuna. Kuna. But yes, yeah, so there you go. But um, Mike. Join us from uh, Phoenix. Then we got BG from Scotland. And Larry T's in the house. And then we Larry also T, have Cheeky Nando in the house. So there we go. Cheeky Nando, so, all the way from Portugal. There we go. All right, you ready to look at some more so images? Let, we got some more images. Glad here. to have everybody here today. Yeah. Now, here's a nicer waterfall there. Mm hmm. That's nice. A little bit of little, uh, little lens flurry. Yeah, a little. A little crooked? A little bit. A little bit? A little bit. And it's also, yeah. Hey, you know what? Can it's I show also you that tree's throwing you off on the crooked. The trees are throwing you off yeah. on the crooked. Hey, can I show you something, though? People don't, don't know about this. I mean, not every, some people do. Yeah. <laughs> Down here in the geometry panel, which is the stupidest name ever, there is a little slider that I love called Rotate. Mm-hmm. And it's just a rotation slider. Yeah, I love it, too. I Especially love it. Especially because of the grid pattern it has. Yeah, like right there. That looks. Yeah, that looks a lot better. That looks better. Look. It was crooked, right? Now there's also a button called constrain crops. Crop. So you don't have that stuff left over. There but that go. was look, that was crooked. Yep. Come on. Yeah, definitely falling over. Come on, sheeple. I think it might could go a hair more, just a tiny little bit. Oh. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Look it. at that. Look how crooked that was. Come on, sheeple. Yep. Much better. All right. Here we Much go. Much better. By oh, the way, I call everybody. I'm your, in my sheeple phase, your, so I call that to everybody. There oh, we go. There it is. That's very pretty. Mm-hmm. That would be better, bigger. <laughs> Give me a second. Let's make them bigger. There we go. Yeah, I That's, like the layers. Yeah, I like the layers. It's my least favorite of the three. Uh, this is... I, I do like the uh, the straightened version of this. Yes, it's got to be straightened. But once it's straightened, it's a much stronger. There we go. And then they're very nice. You, you've got the composition and stuff. I would just say to you, if I had to give you any advice at all, just keep looking for more interesting places. These, you've got the photography part down. Now it's well, time to go to places thing, that make the, people go, ooh. The other thing that I've noticed in there is, is there's not a prominent foreground element. Well, this one does. Which one? This one has a prominent foreground element. Yeah. I mean, this one has a little bit of shrub. It's not awesome. Yeah. And this one has really none at all. Yeah. But still, they know what they're doing. They definitely do. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if you start looking for some great locations, that's all you have to do to connect the dots there. Just you're, you're real close. Next up. Let's see what we got. So these are all okay. 
They're okay shots. You know what you're doing. You know, you know how to run your camera. But no one's going to look at a, a shot of a bottle and go, oh, man, that's really good. It's just, yeah, there's a horse. This is probably my favorite. But, I mean, they're all okay. You're, you're obviously know how to use your camera and, and stuff. Yeah, even there, I mean, the, it was stronger. I mean, the, the bird, the, the, given the position, the bird's right through the mountain there in the horizon. Like, it's not, it's yeah. either the, the bird below into the mountain or the bird above into the sky, or it's just sitting in a weird spot. And I'm going to do this real quick. If and coming I'm in my... on it, like cropping in on it. Well, why can't I open this? Oh, let me just open it in Photoshop here. Hang on. Oh, I already had it open in Photoshop somehow. Uh, does it need, and let me ask you this, does it need this other ugly looking branch with nothing going on on it? Is this helping the photo? If it's not helping the photo, it's probably hurting the photo. Does it need that? No, but then could you come in on it a little bit too? Yeah, now you could. Yeah, I would come in this way probably. Mm-hmm. Hey. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, 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 That's better. It's definitely better. And now it doesn't accentuate the it running through as much. Yeah, it doesn't look as, as... I think I might get rid of that and that too. There you go. Yes, much stronger. Just to simplify it, so make it a little better. Yeah, but it's that concept of simplifying the frame. So don't get me wrong. These are all fine shots, but I don't think that you're looking to try to get okay shots. These are all okay. They're good. There's nothing wrong with them. They're in, they're yeah. in focus and they're sharp and they're, the exposure's correct and all. But you 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 probably want to create pictures that make people go, "Wow, that's beautiful. That's amazing. Where is that? How'd you get that?" Not like, "Oh, there's a bird." There's a bottle. There's, a, you know what I mean. It, it's yeah, but to they're your point, not they, they know how to they're use just, their camera. They know how to expose the shots. Right. It's none of those you know, things. It's none of those things. It's never. It's not the equipment you're using. There's it's a horse. Not any of that. Yeah. So aim higher. You got to start trying to find some things, and 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 you know what, guys? I know that that's hard. I know it's very easy for me to say, "Oh, go find someplace great." But if you want to create great images, they may not be in your backyard. They may not be in your hometown. You may have to go someplace. You may have to do something. Uh, look at Eric, who's driving all over. I mean, we're in Florida, which is not a hot spot for Milky Way. Nobody comes to Florida because to shoot the Milky Way. We're going to Florida because it's a Milky Way paradise. Eric drives ridiculous amounts of hours. And what he has to do for his rocket photography is a bigger pain than I would ever do. It is a super pain in the butt. And... Eric's chances of actually even getting to fire a photo are about 50-50. He can go through all the yeah, trouble, I went, I went this weekend, I had all the plan. I, oh, I didn't even go in. I had, a, I had an awesome plan this weekend, and it scrubbed. I, I was set up for oh. three hours. Yeah, so he goes all the way over there, drives hours, sets up, does all this stuff, gets everything set up, and then they go, oh, it's scrubbed. Yeah. Now you have to go back. But also, Eric spends the night over there for dawn shoots and different i mean it's yeah. like it's this is it's a lot of work well it's even get. going down to uh fort desoto there it's like uh you know so that's an hour from here yeah to get that um, shot of yeah the skyway. and i had to you know try to figure out with the weather and it would look like a possibly possible and then yep. i had to sweet talk the the, the um, ranger. ranger to say hey i'm just going to be here for another 20 hey, minutes Mr. Ranger. you know okay you know so yeah it's it's easy it's for us that. to say go make better stuff but if you want to make better pictures, it, it takes effort. They don't usually fall into your lap. Every once in a while you get lucky. But more often than not, you're going to, you know, uh, Rick Salmon always says you have to make great photos. Like You definitely do. It's, it's about making. Yeah, exactly. And that's where, you know, you'll get to the point where you know that it's just a snapshot or it's just a whatever. Well, let's take a look at this next shot. Yeah. You know that this photographer, look at that. So that's the Parliament House in um, Hungary. Mm-hmm. What's Budapest? I'm, I'm trying to think of the name. Yes. Yeah, well, in Hungary. But it's Budapest, Budapest in Hungary. And when you know, when you go to cool places and stand in front of cool things, you get cool shots, and that that's a really nice shot. And I've seen really, really cool shots of that at dawn and dusk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Can I tell you something though? I hate to say this. I'm going to say it though. It's leaning. 
Stay with me. This whole thing, watch. It needs a skew to the right. Tell me it wasn't. Watch. It was leaning. Yeah. Look at that. I'm going to make it bigger. Yeah, it was leaning. The whole, the whole, I could tell it is. So a friend of mine, friend of mine, Paul. Hey, Paul. Friend of mine, Paul. We, um, we talk about, he goes, you open an image and you can see that it's too blue or you can see that it's too yellow. And I'm like, you know how you get to that? Because I used to wonder, how do people see that? You know, like friends of mine that were really good at Photoshop would, would say, you know, when I was first learning, they were like, yeah. oh, this is blue. And I'm like, dude, I do not see any blue. Then you fix it and then you see the blue. The only way to get good at seeing color is to fix it. The only way that you start seeing that things are tilted and things are is to fix them, is to start being aware of them and start realizing that, it's all, wow, it's that's repetition as well. It's practice yeah. and repetition. Yeah, that's it is. It's yeah. doing it over and over again to where you open an image and the first thing it says to you is the whole thing is skewed. And that's what I did. I opened it up and look at it. Look on screen. That's skewed. Here, I can open my, my make it bigger here. Yeah. That is skewed. Come on. So still a nice shot still really yes, like it that's a great shot you know what it is so here's the difference between this shot and and the other photographer and let me ask you was there is there is his exposure better than the others or her exposure is her composition Settings. it's that she's showing you something more what interesting ISO they shot at didn't matter. Yeah, it's not. It's not the camera settings. It's not the lens. It's not that you're standing in front of something more interesting. It's not a bottle on a piece of wood. It's a really, really cool building on the water in Europe. It's like, dang, that's cool. So that it, it's hard to make those images, but that's that's one. Let's look at this next one. Look at this. This is nice. Mm -hmm. I like the the matting they put around it. Yeah. And the, the angry clouds and the light just peeking through here and, and there, Grand you've Canyon. Got the snow. That's a certain time of year where you've yeah. got the snow. And yeah. I like this. Yeah. This is small. This is my least favorite of the three, but it's nice. It's a little it's country nice church. Up. There's no cars in the parking lot or anything to kind of kill the timelessness of it. This is my least favorite, but it's all right. Mm -hmm. Still, still okay, but the other two, you got some really nice stuff there. So you're you are really going in the right direction. So keep it going, rally. What do we got here? Let's take a look at these three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are yeah. so good. Yeah. They're so good. Especially, this is it's it's the first two are really good. The third one's good. Third one's good. Yeah. This one, this one is just really really good oh yeah now i think what i think they're doing is they're shooting through a piece of glass maybe i mean there there's there's water coming off of her oh i think it's multiple layers of yeah stuff. i mean there's 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 a lot going on here put it but, that way but forget the cool water effect mm -hmm. look at the lighting and look at the expression and the toning and all this is just so nicely done. Well, and they even have it um, sculpted right where it's like it's not too bright uh, in certain areas. Yeah, I mean, you, you've got the nice highlight pleasing. on one side, and then you still have light over here. Yeah, that's really nicely done. This is beautifully done. And that's the same. Thing I would there. say it's a tad much on the retouch. Yeah. Back off that retouch a little bit, but it's still very nicely done. The lighting is just so subtle and so nice. And uh, that's really nice. This one's actually very nice as well. Yeah, it really it's is. It's nice. I mean, they're good. You know what it they're is? Good. I think the face is too bright. And that's, I'm yeah. rarely one to say that, but I think her face is too bright. Let's get the brush. Well, it's, it's also because of the dark clothes, dark hair. Yeah, I know, but background. still, that's why it stands out so much. Yeah, it's like it's. Let's it's, just back it off a little bit. Maybe that's too much. That's three quarters of a stop. Yeah, half stop. Let's go to a half stop right there. I think that, look how much, see, yep. it was, I think yep. it was just a little too bright for the rest of the photo. Yep. And you might could actually, I'm going to go in here. Well, even by doing that, you brought out more of the background and more of um, the Maybe hair. just a, a, that's, let's do a half stop gradient from the bottom up. So it's brightening this whole area down here. Yeah. 
But I mean, really good. We're we're nitpicking here, but th this is. Oh I mean, yeah, these are really. Well, these that's, are that's pro kind of nitpicky. quality. When you get that really good, nice. when you get that good, it's those little things. Yeah, it is just really good. Things. Nice job. Well done. All right, coming up next, we got a whole bunch more images and some more fun and prizes coming right up here on the grid. With hey, my name is Larry, and I just got my hands on this awesome camera. The camera does all kinds of cool things. It's a really nice full frame mirrorless camera. So whether you're doing video or still image capture, you're gonna benefit if you know a little bit of inside information about that eye menu that's on the back or where things are in the menus in general. One of the things that a lot of us photographers want is quick answers. We don't wanna to have to spend a ton of time looking through the whole reference manual. Well, I did that for you. If you wanna quick walkthrough of all kinds of features and functions of the new Z6 Mark II. Maybe you're thinking about getting one. What you need to do is stop by and watch my class exclusively at kelby1.com. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Sir Jeremy. I'm a French photographer living in Los Angeles, California, and I'm a fine art artist. I love Sneak Peek because you can host all your photos online you can share the best one through albums with incredible privacy settings. For example, you can just share an album to like three people or for just a number of hours. They have amazing watermarking on the fly where you can just change your mind and watermark and redo the watermark or take it out and it's instant on all your photos. Having an official portfolio is so vital today. Now they have an amazing launching deal where for just taking the basic subscription we're offering now, which is roughly $15 a month, you're gonna get a professional designer to do your website for you. All you have to do is fill in a form with a few data and you're good to go. A designer will design your website for you. So if you don't like web design, this is a great opportunity. I think we're better off taking photos and learning how to do HTML and CSS and getting the most perfect website ever. I mean, even if you were to go the route of WordPress, which I did for many years, having a WordPress is free, but you need to host the WordPress. And a good hosting service is between 10 to $20 a month. So all you have to do is click the link below and get the offer. You will get this special price, which is 50% off for the first year, but you're gonna get it for life. So get it now. I love my Sleepy website. I love the business that it drives me, and I want the same success for you. Get it now. For over 20 years, leading software developer Boris FX has made its mark on the film and television industry. Now, for the first time, our Academy and Emmy award-winning visual effects tools are available for photographers. Welcome to Optics. Optics is a collection of 160 filters for Photoshop and Lightroom. Simply apply the effect and launch the interface. Optics features thousands of customizable and creative presets for photo editing and effects layering. Top tools include lens flares for cinematic looks, realistic night skies with star fields and moon generator, add lightning with on-screen interactive control. The Easy Mask tool creates masks with just a few clicks. Optics is available now as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom and includes the standalone application for Mac OS and Windows. Get Optics now for 15% off. Visit borisfex.com, add Optics to your cart and apply coupon code KELBY15. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. It's four pennies and a dime. <laughs> We're back, me and uh, the can of ham. Yep, I'm the here. The Kuna man, the rocket man, the real man, the can of ham. All right, let's, you want to see a good shot? Take a look on my screen. Look at this. Come on, oh, look yeah. at that. Money. This is what it looks like when someone does a long enough ND shot. At the right, right time. time. Right time. Oh. Because the sky's wonderful. You got the great movement. You got the great color. This is I think that's gotta be the London eye, right? Is this in is that in London? I think it, it looks is. Looks like it. It looks like and, it. And and this is like, you know, we always talk about, oh, if you'd have made your N D longer. I mean, look this at the, is, look at the way the clouds are moving the towards Thames. the eye. Like, I yeah, mean, they, this is some of that great... is the luck of the environment and what's going on. Everyone but this is like own it, own lucky. the fact that you just yeah, that that's great. Who but all cares? the techniques came together. 
The right. composition is great. It's great. Um, it's just a great shot. Yeah, it's just all around. I mean, this, the reflection. You should sell how they put this. The reflec- they put the reflection of the eye kind of where it, you could see it in the, the long exposure, but it's just in there enough. Oh, it's, I, London is, Eye should sell this in their gift shop. So this is uh, probably today my favorite so far. Th- that is like a perfectly executed ND shot. Oh, like that too. So well, I would neat. take the text off the building, but that's just me. Yeah, the, the text on the building isn't helping. And you could actually get rid of it. You really could. Yeah. Do you know why you can get rid of it? Here's why. I mean, you could try like healing Boy, brush. Cool. You could try healing brush or whatever. But that's probably not going to get it done. Like, here, I'm going to try healing brush. Healing and brush. Unless center point is something that's like everybody yeah, key knows. Key to that photo. Oh, I didn't do so badly. Some of the bottom of the letters aren't awesome, but all right. So here's what I would recommend instead. Let's get rid of that. Is you've got enough right here to put it up on its own layer, drag it over, and just cover this whole thing by dragging more copies and just tweaking a little, little like obviously you get to here. You're going to have to pull it down just a hair on the side. But yeah, dude, you could get rid of you that. Get the, yeah, you get the point. Yeah. <laughs> You get the point. I see what you did there. That's uh, that's funny. Okay. I I I love the shot though. You would guy like you. Okay. So. uh, Oh yeah. I like this shot. It's just overly vibrant. Let me let me go. Well, and that one is not a long enough. So if you look at exposure, right? Yeah. How many seconds Uh, is that? Thirty. It is thirty seconds. It should it's have been not long two enough. minutes. If I, look at the first one, open up the first one. I'm sure it's in the metadata because I think this is going to prove the point of. It's just that one. I mean, it could be the time of day too. Four hundred eighty seconds. The Boom, right that's there. That's it. That's it. You know, it's never long that? enough. How many minutes is that, math guy? Oh, a lot. <laughs> well, you figure eight minutes. Sixty. And 48, eight that's a, that's a, uh, yeah, an eight, eight minutes, minute, seconds, eight, like eight minutes, eight minute exposure versus a 30 second exposure. That's the big difference right there. Yeah. And I, that mean, last shot would be a lot better even just at 120 seconds. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. All right. How do you get these long exposures? You've got to stack your filters. So you buy, like, I always tell people get a 10 stop and a three stop. And what's weird about it, can, can I show you something? I'm going to get my phone out. May I get my phone out? Yeah, yeah. Is it okay? Got my phone you right here. Like your calculator? Maybe? I got my phone right here. Name is Paul Revere. Hang on. I'm going to go to my ND counter. I got an ND timer here. Yep. I want to give you an example. I'm going to show you this. This is going to blow your mind. No, it's not, but it's going to help. Let's say that I've got one filter and it's a 10 stop and I'm at one. So my exposure. But is for, it a 10 stopper? It's a ten stop. <laughs> All right, that's a Mimo joke. We always Mimo always says stopper, and so when we round, how many a stopper hey, is that? It's a five a stopper. Oh, that's you a, need that's a, a thirteen a stopper. All right, so exposure is one one twenty fifth of a second. So the scene I'm looking at, yeah, that's, that's putting, the that's a without anything. Without it's anything one, on there, look at the second. scene. All right, so then I tell it I put a ten stop in it, and it tells me eight seconds. Yeah. So at 1 one twenty-fifth of a second, it's eight seconds. Let's add another filter. Let's add a three stop. So mm-hmm. I've got a 10 and I screw a three on top of it. So you're thinking, oh, three stops, seconds. that'll add a few or, seconds. A minute. a minute and five seconds. It has like yep. a multiplying effect. Yep. So don't think that you're getting a 13. That's exactly what it is. It's exponential. It's a multiplying It's exponential effect. multiplying math, scary stuff. Scary stuff. But if Thank you get that you. calculator, which you can show them on the screen. If, yeah, there you go. You get a calculator like that. It's great because that's all you need. So and then you put in what it is. Boom. And you know. With a 10 stop and a 3 stop, keep it on there. Don't move. I'm taking the 3 stop off. Eight seconds. Yep. Come on. Yep. Come and on, then, sheeple. Right. That, that 13 stops, 14 stops, that's kind of that sweet spot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I like 13. You know why I like 13? Because sometimes I just need a three. Yeah. Like it's already kind of shady where I'm at or it's later in the day and I don't need to put a, an eight-minute thing. It's going to be open for a long time. I love a three. All right. 
Uh, what was oh somebody wanted to know what app I was using that's called ND timer for the iPhone it's 99 cents yeah and uh, and everybody Android's who has photo one. pills already it's actually in photo pills as well built into photo pills you don't even have to buy there another one but that was but yeah ND you definitely timer. need uh, I use that all the time it's just an ND calculator there you go true yeah, yeah all right. the time okay anyway we love your stuff photographer whoever you are because who okay. wants to be out shooting a new math Right. Nobody. Nobody. Here we go. Let's take a look. What do we got here? All right. Mm. We've got three photos, all with massive mistakes. Yeah. Let's, let's, a lot let's of go. cutting off stuff. First one stuff. right here. Nothing in this entire photo is in focus. Nothing. Yeah. The ball. The ball's not the in bat. focus. The player in front is way too out of focus. The pitcher is out of focus. His glove is close, but not even in focus. There's nothing in focus in this shot. They're trying to do something creative here. And it's a good thought. It's a good thought. Yeah, that's why you want to give them credit for, like, you're thinking outside the box. Well, I mean, if your photo's crooked, you're already hosed. But if you were going to do anything to help it, you got to reduce this big blurry mess. When you're, you're going to have a problem, too, with that lighting. Yeah. It's, because the player's, like, just going to get really this is blown just out. Not, just, um, let's move on. Yeah. All right. Here's your problem here. You have multiple problems. Number one is the ball's ball. cut off. The ball. But number two is you applied clarity. How do I know that you applied clarity? Because I'm looking at the wrinkles. I could tell you why. And their clothes look dirty. Looks like washed out. Yeah, like, um, they, yeah. yeah, just washed clarity, out. Clarity, you got to be very, you're better off. Gritty. Don't use clarity, use texture. Texture. Because yeah. clarity makes players, especially if they're wearing lighter colors, it, it, it accentuates their wrinkles. It looks HDR'd. But here's where it looks really bad. On out of focus stuff in the background, it's really obvious who used it. And it's crooked. It's crooked. Come on. Let's go to geometry. Let's, let's fix your crooked shot. Which just makes our ball problem even worse. Which is probably why you didn't fix the I was already this. Yeah, so back off on your 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 post processing. It's not supposed to look like HDR. Hey, I did the same thing when I first started. I was over I was overcooking my images and then after a while you realize, especially once texture came out. Well just, texture, yeah, texture. You can was almost like a skip gift. clarity altogether because it's just now be careful. I'm talking about for sports photos. Yeah. I don't want to say actually, get rid of clarity. Clarity sometimes is the exact what you need. It just matters on the type of photography because yeah. Milky Way photography, oh. it's actually the opposite. Yep. Clarity really helps. Texture yep. destroys it. All right. Here's another photo where nothing is in focus. Now, again, you're so close. You're so close. You got fingers cut off, which are not good. You got a moment where he's about to catch the ball. But you got to nail the sharpness. You got to nail it. Yeah. I'm guessing your problem is strictly that you're not shooting at a high enough ISO, which means your shutter speed is less than one. You need one one thousandth of a second. You are at, oh, they're at one twelve fiftieth of a second at 10,000 ISO. So, but you notice the, the noise isn't not, a problem. Yeah. What is the problem is your focus. It's yeah, just it's not, not nailed. Now, yeah. I'm going to give you a little secret. All right. Ready? Go in here with the brush. Go to there. All the way down here is sharpness. Paint over things that have a word on it. So go in mm -hmm. here and paint over like right here. Paint over these areas. Paint over the word vols. And sharpen. You're not going to be able to fix that. And sharpen the crap out of those. And it will make the whole image look like it's in focus. It's not, but it sure looks a whole lot better. Yeah, you're just kind of... You're and the whole photo needs just more eyes. sharpening just in general. So you, yeah. you, you got... You're never going to get it to the sharpness it should be, but you can get it a whole lot better. Also... Yeah, and it's just very unfortunate that, well, yeah. one, they're cut off, but then the, the guy and has your white balance, And your white balance is off, too. You have, like, a greenish color cast... In the photo, so let's go towards yellow. Now that's from the stadium lights. Well, that's okay. We can get rid of that. 
Now your color's better. And let's just get your brightness where it needs to be. All right. So let's see if we can hmm. get you a side by side. So we're getting our color a little better. You can look at the ball and see there's still a tint, a little bit of yeah, green. Yeah, it's yellow, green. Little, it's little. greeny yellow. Yeah, it's not a pullback. You, you could shift your hue if you wanted to. I'm not shifting my hue, Eric. It's not what I'm about. All right. But what you could do, maybe, let's just try. Go to the color mixer. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Go to the tat over here. To not, I wouldn't go to hue. I'd go to saturation. Well, Click could, right here. It's going to pull the yellows. Yeah. Look at it pulling the yellows. Yeah, that's what I do. Out of there. There you go. So we're using that little tool there. It's called the targeted adjustment tool or the tat for short. And you pull it down there and it, it knows what colors are under there. Now that's affected your grass as well, but I don't care about that. I don't want the football looking yellow or, or undo that. And if you're worried about the grass, here's what you do. Get the brush, hit the little new button. So your kept, kept, which we already got there, lower your saturation, just lower the saturation and that'll paint some of that away. There you go. Don't, don't go too far. It'll turn black and white. That would look stupid. You don't want that. But there we go. Subtle. That kind of get rid of that. But you got some work to do. Your biggest thing right now needs to be you got to get your shots in focus. You're not nailing and the focus. You can't cut off stuff. You, you got to. Can't cut off stuff. Now, I will say, again, they're getting in tight, though. They're, they're getting, getting in tight. tight. I they're love that. They're almost getting too tight to cut off stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But so here's what I would say to you. Let's work on your focus. Aim right at the numbers on their chest. If you aim at the numbers on their chest, their eyes will be in focus. So that's where try to aim at the numbers. But here's what I want to give you that's good. You're going for the shot. Like you're trying to mm -hmm. do the baseball shot. You're trying to be creative. Yeah. You're trying to get a peak moment of action in the soccer shot. You're, yeah, you're, I mean, they're nailing that part of it. You're nailing that part. Yeah. You just got a little bit of fine tuning. So I don't want you to go away from this. Th you you got to focus. You got to get the focus. Okay, forget that. But you're close. You're in the ballpark. I think you're, you're on the cusp. You are in the ballpark. You're on the cusp. See what you yep. did there? Yeah. You're on the cusp of making great sports shots. You're not out of the ballpark. It's almost a home run. It's almost a home run. You're going to score if your goal. An extra point is to get it in focus. <laughs> <laughs> we could do this all day, folks, because we're old and we're dads. Okay. <laughs> Let's take a short one. We'll oh, come back, jokes. prizes, and a couple. Maybe we'll look at one or two more. We're kind of out of time, so eh, we'll look at a couple. We'll, we'll do a, a lightning round when we get back. Here we go. Have you ever struggled to take beautiful images of your children? With squirming infants, busy toddlers, and uncooperative children, it's no easy task. I've been a professional child photographer focused on my craft for over 10 years. And I've discovered that as technology changes, so too has the ability to photograph fleeting moments, and it's now easier than ever. You'd be surprised to learn that all these photos you are seeing were not taken with fancy equipment, expensive lenses or lights. They were all captured with an iPhone. Hi, I'm Tracy Sweeney, newborn child and family photographer, and I invite you to join me in this class. I'll teach you the secrets of how to take amazing photographs with the camera that is always with you. You'll learn how to take better portraits, choose lenses, capture children in motion, and edit images that you'll want to share with the world. Come check out my class to learn the tricks of the trade and capture memories to last a lifetime. Would you believe us if we told you that you could fit studio lighting in your pocket? Well, Lytra has made it possible. Lytra is a global award-winning brand that designs and manufactures professional-grade camera lights that are compact, rugged, and waterproof. Whether you're using Lytra gear in a photo studio or underwater, Lytra's mission is to provide content creators with flexible and unlimited lighting tools that can mount on any camera, anywhere. Their lights come with a high CRI or color rendering index, making them some of the most color accurate lights in the industry. Due to the lights compact and rugged design, photographers are able to use the lights in ways that their studio lighting never could. 
Lytra has also made multiple lighting accessories available to fit your every need as a creator. Whether you're shooting portraits, nailing a product shot, or even flying your drone, they have got you covered. Lytra enables photographers and filmmakers to focus on their craft and create something beautiful. What will you create? This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free, and we even have a special audio-only version, too. So sign up today. Hey, we're back, and we're going to look at a couple more real quick. Uh, let's, let's do our prizes first, shall we? Shall we prize it up? Um, let's not because we don't have the prizes yet. Okay, let's just roll on. Here we go. Take a look yeah. on screen. We're on a lightning round, so real quick critiques. I like it. I love the use of leading lines and the way it leads you right to the lighthouse. I think that's in very nicely composed. Good light, good everything. This looks like the Oculus in that New York. It definitely looks like the Oculus with a fish eye. It just seems a little tight. Like it's a little tight in on it, but I kind of like the, the shot. Yeah, it's with like a distorted lens, like a fish eye. Yeah, like a fish eye. And this is very nice. I really like this one and this one. I think you're on to something here, though. Look at the soft light. You got a long exposure, and it looks kind of cold. You know, I kind of like this. It's And look at the buildings are kind of run down. This is an interesting spot there. Uh, and this is nice. Oh, it looks probably the same spot, isn't it? Yeah, it kind of looks like the same kind of tone. I like it, though. I like the light. And I like the, the I like the composition. Their composition skills are really yeah, good. I'm not, not a big fan of the Oculus. I'm, I'm going to skip the Oculus one. I'm going to say that, yeah. like, this yay, this yay, and this no. Nah. Right. Sorry. All right. But that's what you get for a minute. <laughs> you don't get as much for a minute. All right. Let's see what we got here. Oh, that's a nice. I think that's Florence. Oh, that's nice. That is Florence. All right. That's my least favorite. And only because... Of the I sky. Like I like it. I mean, it, I like it. It's just my least of the three. I think uh, the sky's over juiced. Like the yeah, whole if image. You, if you brought, it's, I, yeah, I agree. The whole image is a little over juiced. You can even tell with the history. I mean, oh, it's over juiced. Maybe something in there. But, I mean, it's very nice. It's a very famous bridge. Yes, the yes, you bring it back. Sky's like a bit heavy. But let me go here. This one. I think there is a, gr this is really nicely shot, but I think it's actually too bright. Like bring the highlights back. And these, like this area is kind of blown out over here. Yeah. I think you could maybe fix that a bit. This one just needs a little tender love in, in, um, in post. Like there's some, and these are, you know, these are yeah, but overall, uh, overall. Yeah. That's stuff. trash. What I just did yeah. there. Sorry. But, I think a little balancing of your tones. I love that it's so down low and it makes it look so big and gothic. I really do like that. So that's good. This one really needs some lens correction. It's driving me nuts. Yeah, that that one's my that one's my least favorite. Yeah, my least favorite by far. I don't know what lens you took or camera. I want to guess. Uh, we'll just guess Nikon because they need the love. Well, it's also too. Um it, the edge you got the edge of the street on one side but you just barely there and then you got the edge of the shop and it's and then like you're saying it's just kind of all crooked and fallen into itself you know it's like it's, yeah it's this like is the buildings falling over into the scene yeah e even with that fix there's like i think i think what we're going to do is get the guided upright and say make this is i don't know if this is going to work make this straight and then make this straight. Then, well, well, we're not done. Make this yeah, straight. Yeah, yeah. No, I got you. And then make this straight. Let's see. This is our last chance. It did it, but it messed up the the rest of the photo. Let me let me let me lower the scale so you can see what it did. Is there a recrop we could do here? That would that would save this. So, yeah, like take out some of the height of the building. They can actually make it more of like a square photo. Yeah, make it square. 
and then, then do some content leave it to content to wear fill to fill that in yeah that's what that's that would be better because now the, the, i think that's the duomo but i i think so is what it's called i i was to florence once and it was only one afternoon um but I love the warm and the blue. I like the color thing going on, but the building thing is driving me crazy. Crazy, I tell you. Well, I'll tell you, if you Let's could try pull that this. in now, because, again, now you've got a leading line that's shooting straight down the street. It, it just looks more pleasing. Let me see. Hold on. I'm going to try a little real quick thing stuff well, oops that's not, not enough not two minutes or not one minute i know this is not a one minute we've already blown yeah, past that the network but isn't calling us up yet i want them to i want them to have a great shot here because this is there this is a good photographer and they're yeah they're on the cusp yeah you need a little you need a little you know yeah but you, pick, you just gotta pick, finesse that, that work down, there and a little but i think that's a much stronger shot yeah, so let's go look at the original now. Let me go to the original, and let's undo the changes. Let's revert to the default. I like the height, actually, but everything's messed up. So I think I would have to go with this one. I wouldn't, too. Because I, I think your subject is this building, this building. Yeah. Sweet shop or whatever. And the light coming from that on the street. It's a sweet shop on the outskirts of town. So there we were. It was me, Keith Moon, and who was who was with him? Wayne's World 2. Yes, I know what you're talking about. Del Jim Preston, Morrison. greatest roadie that ever lived. Yeah. It was Keith Moon and somebody else. I don't know. Breaking into a sweet shop on the outskirts of town. All right. So, uh... We, now we have some winners, and I'll get ready for the next one. But good job to this photographer. Yeah, Fix some that prizes. We've got uh, Glenn Hewitt is winning the Boris Effects. Uh, Gary Glass is, uh, loves the show and would like to win the Platypod. So we won the Platypod. Uh, Katie Kennedy, or Kenny, uh, is winning Scott's new iPhone book. Um, it def I am definitely an iPhone photographer, so there you go. And then Will Palinscar from North Virginia is winning the Slick Pick portfolio level account. So there you go. Uh, if you just email us at gridprize at kelby1.com, we'll verify your information and then you send you out uh, uh, your prizes. There you go. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right, uh, uh, we're gonna rapid fire look at some. Here we go, boom. All right, here we go. That's nice. Yeah. That's nicer. That's nice. These are all good. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see a little more light on the other side of her face, but still, I love that she's off to the left. There's a lot of negative space. I like the lighting. I like the outfit. Uh, this is nice. It's got good tint and like a, it's got like a green in the highlights and a blue in the shadows, kind of a cross-processing thing going on. And this is just a nice, crisp, bright, looks like a very commercial shot. I like them all. Boom, boom, boom. That was easy. Two more to go. Oh, no, that's nice. Now, that's... that is that Epcot? That's Epcot. That's Epcot. Because I've been to the Temple of Heaven in China. Yeah, that's Epcot. It doesn't look like that. <laughs> yeah. but nice well, this is Epcot. much smaller than the real one, but it's not yeah. like tremendously that's, smaller. That's it's maybe nice two-thirds. That's very nice. Yeah. That's a nicely done nighttime shot. Well, and shot. that's actually uh, something that's cool about Epcot is you can make shots there uh, that don't look like you're in Epcot. Yeah. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've made a shot similar to this in Italy and in Cologne, but I really like it. You got you to put a plane going across, a composite <laughs> plane in the middle of it, because that's the thing to do on Instagram. Win a competition. And this is my least of the three. You, you did really, you nailed this one. This yeah. one's really good. Good post processing. Really good post. Yeah, the last one. Stuff, the last one. I'm not sure. Like, I don't know. It's a, last. it's a picture of somebody else's art. Yeah. All right. Last one of the day. Here we go. El Tigre. All right. That's my favorite by far. It's a little dark. I was... I, I agree. I think you could 
still have a great shot. Yeah, stop, stop and a half. Stop. So, and a little texture, maybe a little clarity. Let's pull the highlights back a hair and increase the exposure. I think you, you, it's, you're very, very close. Let's hit a before and after. So see how we, the, the shot on the left, it looked a little dingy in the processing. Yeah, it's dingy and it's dark. It looked kind of flat. And well, if you, you have good, you have that good light coming in. You got that, a great pose. Yeah, and you, you got, got that great good light. light coming in. One other thing I might do, just go into the exposure, like a half a stop, just a half Stay a stop. Front, oh, face, what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and there's your before and after. So easy fix. So what do we do? We added a little. We added a lot of contrast because it seemed flat. Uh, we bumped up the whites a little, which adds contrast. <laughs> We lowered the highlights a little, and mostly we added texture, clarity, and uh, and exposure. But even if you took out, I'm going to take out the texture and clarity. You watch; it's not going to make a night and day difference. A little bit on the clarity, but anyway, there's there that. Go. But great shots. So a good shot. Great post happens to great shots. This is nice. I would just clean up some of this stuff right here, like these like vines coming in here, here, here. Those aren't helping. And you might could, and there's an ugly stump here. In fact, why don't we just make this shot better by crop a Rooney. Crop a Rooney. That would... Yeah, that... and they probably didn't because they wanted to remain that, that the tail. The tail? Oh, did I crop the tail? Yeah. Son of a gun. That's my mistake. Hold on. But that's why they did that. But still, I wanted, it was this side, I was, the other side yeah. I was worried about. Yeah, you don't want to crop the tail. But you do have a similar thing. Your contrast could come bumped up. Let's bump up your whites a little bit. Yeah, I think that's what, what it is. Like adding that uh, the contrast and all, it's going to add that depth dimension. You got kind of a green look on the tree. Let's move a little more towards yellow and a little away from that green. Because the, the tree was looking a tad green. Oh, yeah. That brought off a lot of life. Lot of life. All right. And then you could go and add the clarity, which looks great on animals. And texture, ooh la la. And so, and we're just using a couple of sliders, but look at the difference. Yeah. That's why it's, it's, it's a washed out kind of yeah. overcast versus yeah. a punchy contrasty, which, which yes. even the right, it's not punchy contrast. It's just adding the amount of punch and contrast you need. All right, let me get out of this nightmare that is the before and after of camera raw, which is just the stupidest thing ever. Uh, all right, let me get to after. Come on, get me to after. There we go. There's after. One other thing that I might do, let's go down to effects, drop in a little edge darkening, because really, the edges aren't interesting, mm -hmm. and the animal is. Okay, there you go. So that's that's your before and after. And there we got a comment. Um, that second shot on that last one was through, and I, I thought that that might have been the case when that first one was through Epcot. Through a fence? The, the Fez house in Morocco. Uh, the one that was shooting straight up on the last one where we were in oh. China. Oh, uh, yeah. And Epcot, they did the Fest the House Fest in Morocco. House. And that's what I was saying. It, a lot of times in Epcot, that's what's interesting hey, about Epcot. I did on my blog, and you can go back and look it up. I did a challenge where I took shots that were taken in the Moroccan pavilion, and I challenged as whoever gets this right, tells yeah. me where this was shot. I'll give them a free signed copy of my book. It took hours before somebody said, Epcot? Yeah, they were like, it's Morocco, it's Fez, it's you know, yep, Agrabar, yeah, city of mystery, of enchantment. Anyway, so these are great shots. You can see what can be done to them with a little little stuff, right? Hey, by the way, can I just can I plug something else? Yeah, you know what I just finished? My seven point system book for Lightroom. It's a brand new book. I did a seven point system years ago for mm -hmm. Photoshop. It was one of my best selling books ever. But now I've, I apply it to, to Lightroom. Whether you have the classic version or the, the Lightroom Cloud, uh, it's the whole book is written. It, it's not done yet, it's still in editing. So it'll probably be a couple months before the print version is out. The ebook will be out first. But it's all this stuff that you just saw right here. What I do is I give you 21 raw images. You just do one per day for three weeks. It's 10 minutes. It's between five and 10 minutes per day. 
you follow along with me at the end of 21 days and it's just 10 minutes a day it's like an exercise program if you could just work out in 10 minutes a day and be fantastic in 21 days wouldn't you do it this is workout in lightroom for 10 minutes a day for 21 days you will know exactly what to do in what order and you'll look at images like this and you'll go I mean, I'm telling you. Well, that goes back to what we talked in the beginning. It's that repetition. It's repetition. It's that, and that's what the seven point system. I mean, there's just stuff and people watch you. They'll see there's stuff you do to every image, you know, and that's just your process. Yep. And that's and where you got to get to the point where it just becomes repetition. And Eric, in the book, you're like in chapter 11, I go, and now we're going to do the next point again just like we did in the last yep. night yep. it's like the whole idea repetition. is repetition hey so here's the least of these shots can we take a look on screen this just looks like it's all back you know what i mean like yeah. i would i would recrop this shot so you're not seeing all of this i know that it's main but it's like i would i think this is another one you go take it square and the, that stuff doesn't become distracting and then yeah. Drop a little edge darkening in. Oh, yeah. And I think you're there. Yeah. Anyway, I like the photographer. I like the photography. Well, my friends, guess what? It's come time to say goodbye from all of us here at the grid. Christina over there in the moderation, and she's very moderate. Eric Kuna, the rocket man, Canahan, King all of Siam, stuff. friends with Jean-Claude Van Damme. That'd be awesome. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. Juan, somewhere lurking in the shadows. I think he's behind that big monitor, but the monitor's so big it hides Juan. Mike, who's in the, uh, in the control room today, and did a fine job, by the way. Yes. Mike did a very good job today. Yeah, great job. So we keep him another day? We'll keep him. All right. All right. Thanks to all our sponsors. Thanks to all of you guys. Thanks to everybody that submitted. And to everyone that didn't get picked, we had a ton of submissions. We can't get to them all. Uh, you know, I try to pick ones that, that will help either for you seeing what's good or what needs to be fixed or whatever. Hope you guys took them in the uh, spirit that they were intended, which is to help move you further down the path in your career. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Catch you next week. See ya. Ask any wildlife photographer, and they'll tell you there's a pretty unique thrill that happens when you capture a beautiful wildlife image. You're right there in that split second where your subject, your camera, and your creative vision all come together to create something special. Great wildlife images help us connect to nature, and a great one can tug at your heartstrings bring a tear to your eye, or help foster a personal connection with the species. A great wildlife photo stays with you, whether it's that image of a soaring bird in flight, or a tiger stalking its prey. Being able to capture that moment, that natural behavior, their curiosity, or their strength, it's a rare chance to study these amazing animals up close and personal. That's what's drawn so many photographers to this wonderful genre. Creating these truly unique images isn't just luck and a long lens. It's technique. It's planning. Knowing the right locations, the right settings, the post-processing secrets, and having it all come together at the precise moment. It's part art, part craft and a whole lot of fun. This March, a team of some of the world's most gifted wildlife photographers is coming together with one goal in mind, to help you capture the greatest wildlife images of your life. They're here to help you understand the whole process from start to finish and how to capture the type of wildlife images you've always dreamed of, images that Make folks look at your images and just say, wow. You'll learn how to photograph their range of emotions, 
and pro tips for capturing a rare glimpse into their world. The timing, the composition, the gear, the settings. You're gonna learn it all from the best in the business. It's two full days online, and it's open to everyone who longs to create truly exceptional images of nature, its unique inhabitants, and their surroundings. This is the Wildlife Photography Conference, coming March 16th through 17th, 2021, with a special pre-conference session the day before on what makes a great wildlife photo. The breathtaking beauty and diversity of the natural world await. Come and join us on this remarkable journey.